Good afternoon, everyone. Hugo Datao V was mentioned several times during the course of today, and shortly I would like to introduce what is available at Hugo.lv and what language resources we offer for the content and also on what we plan to do in the future. I like to say that Latvia translates using Hugo.lv. I use it myself and I try to use it uh, more and more every day. This uh, helps uh, uh, shaping the resources and also understanding uh, the mistakes that might uh, be created. This uh, w uh, project uh, was supported uh, from, uh, from the European Commission uh, from late 2012 until 2014, and now it is available for the pub uh, public for almost a year already. People increasingly use this portal uh, and translation using this means uh, is uh, used increasingly. It is uh, suited for public and state uh, sector. We do not collect information on what you are translating. We do not uh, um, summarize the documents that you translate. Uh, we uh, take care of, uh, of data security. We also provide high translation quality. Of course, uh, the quality might differ from one domain to another. However, we think that the quality is higher than that of the Google Translate. And one of the most important benefits is the integration in e-services and government authority websites. And our biggest cooperation partner for the time being is Latvia.lv. We are promoting and explaining to government authorities uh, about uh, how Hugo.lv can be integrated in websites. Currently, we offer the following language combinations, Latvian into English, English into Latvian, and Latvian into Russian. So we offer two types of language corpora, and the general and the legislative act corpora. The, this is so what the data currently looks like. In order to translate, for, for Hugo.lv to translate it in a sufficiently high quality, we have parallel corpora in the, in the link. English Latvian and Latvian uh, English general parallel uh, flow. And we think that this is the largest corpora for the time being. And we hope that uh, for, uh, we will be able to cooperate to further on to supplement these corpora. Uh, data for the corpora are acquired from publicly available language corpora as well as from websites and other text materials. One of the things that we attempted to do uh, but didn't succeed that much it was uh, cooperation with government authorities to acquire these parallel data translations uh, at stage one during stage one. What we see is that uh, some ministries, some government authorities sent in more information, therefore uh, translation quality in some domains is higher, whereas it is lower in some other domains. However, what is clear is that, uh, as it was mentioned previously, the more data there is, uh, the better the quality there, there will be. Certainly, we have to assess the quality of the received data. And in our co uh, communication with the state uh, chancery, we understood that not all texts can be included in the language corpora in, and uh, in order for the translation quality to be good for state quality uh, standards, uh, certain data will need to be supplemented. In the future, we would like to publish, uh, to provide uh, public access and uh, provide uh, uh, interfaces for, for browsing these corpora, as well as provide uh, research opportunities. And we would like to, uh, to uh, improve 
the domain terminology, dictionaries, and uh, ensure cooperation with the domain professionals and to ensure also cooperation with other languages. One of the key tasks is to create domain-specific language corporum. Our task in the next stage is uh, the cultural corpora, uh, judicial domain, as well as healthcare. And thus, we could increase the translation quality for domain-specific needs. Certainly, we would also like to work on a, a unified or a single a translate, a repo, a rep, a repository of translated documents. And we want to make the this delivery or management and uh, summarization or collect, collection of this data uh, in, in a more simplified manner, because previously it wasn't really organized. It was uh, it was stored on, um, on flashcards and sent by emails and so on and so forth. So we would like to create a unified website where uh, government authorities can send in data um, and uh, where we can. Um, uh, appraise the quality of the translation. So w our encouragement is uh, to to cooperate for the uh, state authorities and, and the institutions so that uh, the uh, the content can be domain specific and adapted. A quick question, Yanis, do you see? Uh, a specific domain that is in the biggest need of data in, in hugo.lv. Uh, please ask the speaker to use the microphone. One of the areas certainly is culture, the domain that we are working in. For example, date, uh, museum data, where we have about one million entries which are not translated into other languages. And um, automated translation would save resources. Another domain is a judicial domain where uh, court decisions or court rulings can be translated after that um, using ma machine translation technologies. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, the next speaker is Yuris Baldonchiks, who represents the Terminology Commission of the Latvian Academy of Science. And he could uh, um, tell us more about the available uh, terminology resources and how they can be used or applied for uh, Im improving the situation for, for developing the the industry, so to speak. I represent a, a public organization that is an, that has a specific status. It is included in the Latvian Academy of Science, and it is not a legal entity. Uh, our uh, uh, what what is funded in our commission is a, a half time a chair and a, a full time secretary. So basically, this is public public vo voluntary work, so to speak, because nobody else gets paid for anything. And unfortunately, for the time being, this uh, terminologic work or scientific work is not institutional. It is uh, doubtlessly scientific research work because uh, the preparation of uh, dictionaries on specific domains is is the is equal to uh, say writing scientific papers or or doctoral theses or or books the workload uh, is being administrated in the database called the ACAD term, the, the scientific terminology. And on the first page of our website, you can see a list of various element sets or data sets that comprise this this database. Uh, you have uh, various dictionaries and decisions adopted by the Third Terminology Commission and uh, bulletins uh, of written by the Terminology Commission as well as uh, such materials as encyclop encyclopedias uh, published in the 1980s. 
and other lists of resources. In a good sense, this is a very varied collection that, that begins with the terminology dictionary of 1922 and ending with materials adopted in 2014. What is our problem? Certainly, our database is very frequently and widely used by the translators and, uh, I assume, interpreters who are preparing for interpreting events. This uh, is um, clear because I educate uh, the future translators myself. So what are the key problems? This database is uh, targeted at very competent users who are capable of deciphering, decoding, understanding, able to identify which uh, terms are outdated, which are up to date, which can be used, which are still topical ones. In other words, the, we have the biggest problem is the, the problem of uh, the status of terms. In order to make changes, in order to make this database more understandable or comprehensible for less competent users, we would need to um, invest a large amount of work. We would need to revise this entire complex. We would have to hand it over to domain professionals, to industry or field professionals. Well, this is my understanding of it. We, they would need to assess what is outdated, what should not be made public anymore in order to avoid misleading users. Uh, they would also need to identify which terms are still uh, official and which are still used and topical. So we need status levels. But in order to do that, we need high levels of funds because we would need to engage a high number of specialists because uh, I doubt whether this can be done on the basis of enthusiasm considering our today's world. Generally, I outlined the problems because there are outdated terms that can be found in our database. So a lack of definitions for many terms of say for terms that have been scanned from older dictionaries so when uh, the defin when the tradition for supplementing translations with definitions did not exist yet. It is certainly a great setback. However, there are various databases and corpora and, uh, and, and they have their quality indicators. So how do we achieve the state where the terms used by field professionals and how to avoid that other translations of terms would be included in other databases. So, so in order to avoid too, providing you with too many examples, I would like to offer you a, a, some examples from the marine terminology, which I am in, in good command of. When we worked on the encyclopedia in the 1980s, so we uh, agreed with the specialists and with the technical editors. So we had um, uh, we had the specific discussions about terms. For example, uh, the term of, uh, of ships as barges was rejected. And later on, a bulletin on marine terms was developed. And once again, this was was confirmed. But, but uh, what we see now in our ACADTERM database, we see links to several dictionaries where this hasn't been taken into consideration. OK, this would be fine with the older dictionaries. However, this term still appears, this, this russificated term, so to speak, uh, still appears in various more recent dictionaries. 
and uh, we can come across the, the uh, a translation of a ship to barge, also in IATE. And I think that uh, in, the, in, in the terminology resources, and specifically in these large corpora, we have to uh, think how to select terms so that it is more or less clear for users that uh, this, whether this is a, an officially ad adopted term or it is not an official term and w or whether it is a rejected or a non-recommended term that we're talking about. So basically this, will, this would be the largest problem because we should not forget that we shouldn't uh, take care, uh, be too carried away with what is taking place in the English language. Uh, ang English is English. It is uh, not the translated language. It is the original language. The, um, the percentage of translations in their corpora is uh, very low. It is quite on the contrary in our language. Uh, um, Professor Weisbergs is no longer here, but uh, he said uh, he has mentioned several times that uh, uh, he, that uh, the 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 situation is as it is. I have analyzed quite a few translations in my scientific work. So, how do we come up with filters uh, in order uh, in order to come up with a, a more or less comprehensible system in the field of uh, of terminology? Because otherwise, the terminology commission or terminology dictionaries can simply be given up. Because otherwise, we have this one general large language, and then everybody does what they want. One ministry uses one term for, for one phenomenon and another ministry uses another term. But we need some kind of a competence. We need the we need some so to speak the, the literary language and then we need the other domain specific terms. Oh, we Certain funds need to be allocated from the government budget in order to normalize this process. And from the organizational point of view, the, the, the state, uh, the official language law uh, mentions that the state language committee is uh, the key organization for the Latvian language and uh, all documents of various uh, levels or le all legal documents of various uh, levels are not requested to be coordinated with the terminology commission. So the terminology commission becomes uh, an increasingly more remote and vague phenomenon and as, uh, as the um, employees change and as the new generation uh, slowly takes over they more frequently tend to forget about the terminology commission so this 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 is what we observe we need to do something in two directions we need to uh, so to speak clean up or organize the terminology database so this would either be uh, a, a completely new da database which uh, uh, combines together all the previous ones so or whether we need to reform the database somewhat differently and, and the situation needs to be you know, tackled differently. But the current uh, state of affairs is not acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beldonchik. Do we have any questions from the floor? Mr. Baldic, would you like to bring your perspective into the whole discussion, you know, would you like to explain what the State Language Center does, what resources you have at your disposal, and how those resources might be used to create automated uh, translation systems, and what would your response be to the intervention of Mr. Balduncic? Dear representatives, hello. Dear participants, now, as regards to sort of reactions, I was very surprised by what the first speaker said. And, you know, I had a lot of, you know, ideas and, you know, uh, I was very, very, um, you know, surprised by what the first speaker said. What concerns Mr. Baldunchik, we meet on daily basis, you know, we are in different, you know, bodies and work together so we know what uh, 
both of us have to say. So I come from the State Language Center, and let me go back to 1996, when the, it was decided that Latvia will start open the negotiations for the accession to the EU, when the Translation and Terminology Center was created, a public body which was responsible then for the translation of a key communitaire or the European Union legislation into Latvian. You know, that's a must, you know, all the member states must do this in order to be accepted to the European Union. So. Translation Terminology Center, in order to do, do just that, to translate, was the first to develop uh, the translation of uh, legal acts, methodology for the translation of legal acts. Some, you know, ministries had such methodology, but it was rather haphazard or ad hoc or on one-off basis. And we began translation in '96 according to methodology that we ourselves developed. But from the very start, it was obvious or clear that we'll not only have to deal with translation, you know, as the title says, but we'll also be responsible for the terminology work. So it wouldn't make sense to spend human resources and financial resources on translation without making further use of it and uh, creating a terminology database. And we created the first terminology base that is publicly available or accessible from 2001. However, considering the nature of a key communitaire, which had to be translated on the basis of the dictionaries that were available to us at the time and that have been mentioned by Mr. Baldur, for example, the Economics, Business and Business Administration Dictionary and different legal dictionaries uh, were the ones that we relied on in the first Yes, we probably slightly neglected those terminology areas that are not covered by a key communicator or those areas that are not covered. Well, a key communicator is full of agricultural terminology, purely scientific terminology that is not covered by the EU legislation is therefore not a part of this database, was not included in that database. So we compiled huge amounts of data, we analyzed it and made it available through this database. At the same time, or in parallel, we also started translating the national legislation into English. We also had to develop a methodology for this kind of translations as well. And we still continue to translate the Latvian legislation into English. You know to the extent possible, you know, within the frame of our budget and resources. And we continued the same work after the accession to the EU in 2004. However, in 2009, in the face of the financial crisis, the government decided to cut down the public administration. And that's when we were merged and uh, the uh, State Language Center was created. So State Language Center, in this regard, is a legal and a practical successor of the Translation Terminology Center, uh, you know, took over the resources and the work of the Translation uh, Terminology Center. Of course, on, it also fulfills other functions as well. So basically what that means, that means that we are still uh, responsible for the maintenance and updating of the terminology database so that was created as a result of translating a key communicator, as well as terminology that was created, you know, while transposing the EU legislation into Latvia, like customs, agriculture, and other terminology, and there were other um, terminology working groups being established within the center, you know, to work with particular areas or different industry terminology. And our term database also provides uh, the trustability assessment. You know, anyone working with the databases knows that there is overlapping of terms or duplication of terms. There are some terms, some units that are not 100% precise or outdated, have become obsolete. Nevertheless, we consider that this database was one of the oldest terminology databases and the biggest, probably, um, databases in Latvia is solid. Uh, you know, a basis uh, for creating this integrated or joint uh, terminology database. 
or you know basically the it could be merged with the ACAD term that is maintained and updated by the uh, Academy of Sciences Technology Committee. And this is exactly what the government decided in, in October 2014 when it accepted the language development guidelines for the period until 2020 or for 2015-2020 time frame. Uh, we cooperate very closely with the official journal of uh, the Republic of Latvia, Latvis Vest. This is its name no, or so should any cabinet of ministers regulation or laws be translated in english if you open or if they, if they are translated just go to the official journal and click on translation and uh, this link will uh, get you to our database and that's a you know, a good idea instead of having parallel systems, one being older and slightly misleading, but having single sort of a, a source where the up-to-date translation is available, basically operating through links is what we think is smart. However, due to the scarcity of resources, we've not been able to introduce the latest amendments in our translations. Unfortunately, you know, that's a sort of a procurement practice that is, is there, you know, that our government has. So that's why not all the amendments are integrated. And in the past couple of years, since 2013, uh, up to now, we've uh, been implementing a European Commission project, project uh, focusing on court interpreters and translators. And we helped them, you know, through this project to develop translation memories. And we helped them to select the text. And I would like to underline that we helped them to successfully select the texts. Um, we did that together with the tr translators themselves. And um, this uh, corpora is meant, or translation memories, are meant to assist those translators, interpreters, in providing uh, appropriate translation and uh, provide for the consistent use of terminology throughout the court system or throughout all levels of courts from regional to supreme. And that's why I was so surprised about the idea of creating a medical terminology corpora or medical text corpora or medical document corpora. I am uh, medical doctor by background, so I know the medical terminology quite well, and I know very well, you know, what happened when the notorious and heavily criticized e-health project was uh, developed or came about. You know, there was also a significant element uh, that was uh, intended to, to, to produce the language resource and, and translation memories to avoid having bad translations that have been made by different agencies that haven't had the proper competence. And, you know, there was a mo money earmarked for that, uh, databases, classification, translation practices, guidelines, and integration in other electronic resources was a part of the ELF, but unfortunately it failed. Uh, that was one of the avenues that we should have persuaded, but, you know, there are also other areas that we would like to dip our sort of toes in. We sometimes forgot about universal decimal classification and parallel lists that we started working on but have stopped. Maybe in, you know, health or medicine, we might have those medical subject headings, you know, that we have in several languages that would significantly simplify the browsing and information search or data search. So basically, there are different avenues that, again, we can pursue. But if we want that, to, if we want to have some quality assurance, we must uh, attract knowledgeable, competent people. But unfortunately, I should say that, you know, I have had a painful experience. I see that different terminology projects are being implemented by God knows who, people who translate something. And then the others, they improve it. Oh. 
smoother than it, but you know, I remember from my time in the terminology commission where suddenly uh, an adult education glossary came about where adult and student were translated as they should, but uh, when it came to more complicated terms, there were, how to put it, not inappropriate, but seldom used and new terms. So that was something very surprising. I think that very, very close supervision or monitoring is required or control is required to make those corpora useful. And I should say that we should try to somehow avoid institutional jealousy, if you will, and we should try to avoid misinterpretation or misapplication of uh, copyright. You know, if you claim that you own a copyright to two terms that you've included in your article, is insane, it's rubbish, it's stupid. Unfortunately, this is the case sometimes, nevertheless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baltinch. In our morning session, Sayola from the European Commission uh, talked about uh, CF at, uh, at the, um, the efforts of the European Commission to create an automated translation framework or infrastructure that would simplify the automatic translation of various e-services across Europe and would help us overcome the language barrier in Europe. Mr. Baltic and Mr. Baldunczyk, what's your take on this project? How? Could you contribute, your organizations could contribute to this uh, EC project? Well, I am from an organization. I mean, I represent the public administration. Mr. Baldunczyk does not have any particular legal status uh, for his organization, or he's an NGO. And we've been approached by those who are implementing this project, and what we have heard is nothing really exciting. I mean, our cooperation with EC has been or on the or started on the wrong footing. They've said, you know, give us all the resources, and you will have no say over them. I'm sorry, but that's not sort of equal partnership when they just demand all the resources that we will no longer have control over. In 2004, 2005, this was the way they talked to us. Um, they have not reached out uh, to us ever, ever since. Um, yes, probably at the institutional level, the approach is correct. However, we have had, we have received requests from time to time to use the resources of the ACAD term database. But we have received them from the representatives of the EU institutions. As far as I am informed, during the recent couple of years, we have never rejected our help. And Mr. Tsaun is going to talk about this later. Uh, and I think that he's going to give greater details about how we cooperate when we are requested to do so. Now I would like to give the floor to Ilze Auzinja from the Institute of Mathematics and Computer Science of the University of Latvia. Uh, maybe you could explain about your resources, uh, about uh, uh, the, your ideas about the CEF.AT project and uh, your contribution to the entire process. Good afternoon. I would like to say that uh, the Artificial Intellect Laboratory of the U in Institute of Mathematics and Computer Science, uh, the collection and uh, development of Latvian language resources has been taking place for uh, 25 years. So it has been uh, taking place since the late 1980s. I am going to touch upon the most important resources that have been developed during these years. Those would be electronic uh, uh, 
dictionaries as well as uh, text and speech corpora. Uh, since uh, the mentioned uh, 2011 resor uh, research, uh, the lack of resources and instruments and tools uh, for the Latvian language has been decreased, uh, this, the slack that is, existed. Well, as for the electronic dictionaries, I would like to mention the so-called tesaurs, the thesaurus. It was mentioned a couple of times here, directly or indirectly. And I would like to say that uh, this would currently be the most extensive explanatory dictionary in the Latvian language, especially in uh, the one that uh, among those that are available online. In uh, the autumn, uh, version it is continuously supplemented and for the time being we have 251,000 plus entries and the thesaurus is being uh, updated uh, quarterly so we have the winter spring summer and autumn versions and now since autumn has set in you can acquaint yourself with the autumn version since the summer this dictionary is available in a new in a new design and it will certainly be supplemented in the future as well i would like to say that uh, 282 various sources were used for creating and developing this thesaurus. 20 of them were primary sources that were uh, used for uh, developing at least uh, uh, a certain percentage of uh, the uh, entries. Another thing is that synonyms uh, or synonym candidates are automatically highlighted. We're still working on it, but uh, but since this is taking place uh, automatically, then uh, uh, we have uh, room to believe that uh, this will improve in the future continuously. Another thing that uh, I would like to mention regarding uh, dictionaries uh, is uh, the Latvian literary language uh, dictionary in its electronic form. It has been available for quite a while. The artificial, uh, it is available on the artificial uh, intellect uh, dictionary server and it uh, is available among other dictionaries or resources developed by our laboratory. Oh, it provides all resources that we have worked with in one way or another. And you can also see the, that we have worked on some ancient dictionaries, say at least in the, in the area of digitalizing them. If you look at them, then you will definitely see that some are um, on successful trials. Maybe those, there are some dictionaries that were first attempts, say in the early 1990s. Those are available there too. Uh, there was discussion about whether the, the resources are collected and, and pooled then uh, I would like to say that the, these, uh, this, uh, this is the resource where you can uh, find all the resources where the employees of the artificial intelligence laboratory have contributed to in one way or another. And regardless of the fact that you have to put some effort into accessing it, then you can access also the Latvian language dictionary designed by our former linguists, Milan Box and Enzelins. What is available publicly is the, uh, all of the entries uh, beginning with the letter A, but if you register and, uh, and apply for a, a username and a password, then you will receive it and then you will be able to uh, also uh, access the other uh, other entries. And uh, n next year, a uh, copyright expires for uh, this resource. So probably y you will no longer have to apply for usernames and passwords to access this resource. So you are welcome to uh, use the dictionary server of the artificial uh, intelligence laboratory. However, I would like to mention the corpus, uh, corpora, the text, as well as speech corpora that have been de uh, developed during the recent years. One of them that is very important uh, in the area of the research of the Latvian language, uh, that is uh, the, uh, so to speak, balanced modern Latvian language text corpora. 
which includes approximately 4.5 million uh, word uses. What what is it significant with? It it can it includes text selected in certain proportions, and and on the side that you can see uh, in what proportions they have been selected, and you see that what the current state is uh, for the time being. Text for uh, for the period from 1991 to 2013 have been included in it. To a certain extent, it. Uh, uh, shows the development trends of the current written or modern written Latvian language. It doesn't include only blog texts or only legislative texts. It includes everything, bits from everything. And this, to a certain extent, shows how we develop our language. Uh, certainly, the volume in order for uh, this uh, uh, balanced uh, um, corporate to be used professionally is uh, too too small and we would be happy to expand this corporate this corporate is available publicly but then again this was mentioned uh, previously in order to access it and make use of it you need to download a browser a Minetto browser uh, that en enables you to use this corpora in research and uh, using uh, the language processing tools mentioned by Mr. Gruzi, this uh, every entry has uh, uh, has uh, morphologic information appended to it. Say, so, uh, say uh, what uh, uh, the uh, what the word is, uh, what are case endings, and what are the applicable. Of verbs to it. So this uh, is uh, an important resource for not only linguists uh, to be used for research. Apart from this corpora, other text corpora have been developed both uh, syntactically marked, uh, labeled, uh, as, um, as well as semantically uh, labeled corpora that are used for uh, developing um, Latvian analytical tools. And then there are specific corpora. For example, of the latest version for the Latvian uh, parliament uh, work session of transcripts has been developed and it has been labeled specifically adding the names and last names of speakers, dates of the sessions. You can look them up by by the names of MPs or by, by parliamentary groups. So for the time being, you can look up the um, the transcripts of the uh, sessions of the 11th time. Uh, and you can also look up uh, the video materials or, so, so to say, images of the MPs. Uh, I would also like to mention the ancient Latvian text corpora. Uh, the de developing of, was launched a, a long time ago. I don't even remember when. However, whenever significant materials are found, uh, and most frequently those would be just handwritten scripts, they are appended uh, to it. Uh, and certainly, uh, I need to mention also the Lithuanian, Latvian, Lithuanian uh, parallel or line text corpora. I can't tell you how many entries it includes, but uh, this was uh, not aligned automatically. It had the Latvian and the Lithuanian text, and these uh, texts were aligned manually. So the uh, corpora developers just went through it manually. And for those uh, in Lithuania who are learning Latvian or vice versa, the Latvians who are learning uh, Lithuanian in Latvia uh, can make great use of it uh, during their studies. Uh, I also wish to mention the modern uh, Latgalian vernacular text corpora that has been de designed in our laboratory. And certainly, I would like to mention the uh, language recognition corpora, the uh, the uh, corpora that was designed during the IT uh, Competence Center pro project, and it was. Uh, 
it has been made for the language technology development uh, processes. Uh, a part of it is available publicly, and mostly it has uh, uh, it has been developed on a voluntary basis. And you will be able to uh, find eight hours of orthographically tagged data and listen to it. Certainly, all of these resources would not be possible to develop without funding, without the EU structural funding, without uh, cross-border funding, and the uh, Latvian Language Agency, the Latvian Research Program support, and, and various uh, uh, cooperation pro programs between both academic institutions as well as enterprises. So that would be all. Thank you, Mrs. Auzinha. I was glad to hear that Latvia has such an abundance of corpora that, uh, that we are able to nurture and develop our language in such a way and that so many resources are available. Now, as for uh, the uh, language resources uh, are available for Mr. Zarinj, uh, at the Latvian National Library. Many of us can see it at the National Library, the, which was built recently, and many of us were able to, so to speak, put our hands of it when at the temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius, people joined in a chain to deliver these books uh, one by one uh, to the library. Maybe you could add a little bit more on what is uh, available for or what the, the library can access. Well, it's difficult to tell uh, or, you know, cover everything that is available in the library, so let me focus on digital resources in particular. So <laughs> digitalization of uh, culture, heritage is something whether we primarily do, but we also digitalize other content. Uh, that's something that we've been doing in parallel. Of course, we could sort of boost or scale up uh, this uh, digitalization of other resources. Most of the resources that we have digitalized are available at laboratorylndb.lv, the website. And we have there the text corpora, and we have the title database as well, the four million pages of text that have been digitalized, funded by the, approved through a project funded by the EU structural funds. Uh, about a million uh, pages of books have been digitalized in different languages, primarily in Latvian, but we also have digitalized books in Russian, German, to, to, to a lesser degree, of course, and we've covered the time period from 1761 to 2009. So it's quite a varied corpora, so to say. And this is indeed something that we've done in parallel without any particular purpose, but for other reasons because of the uh, preservation uh, reasons and, and conservation reasons. Uh, nevertheless, that's something that we've been doing in scope of the cultural heritage preservation. And we sort of started going to in depth into this corpora as we created this corpora. And the most interesting sort of outcome is that, you know, this is freely accessible, freely available um, uh, corpora um, that we've made uh, you know, available for everybody. And what was interesting was sort of coupling of this corpora with other resources that we have. And we have a universal decimal classification that we've offered, and we also have the subject categories to, to describe our collection or to enable browsing of our collection. You can also browse by proper names, geographical names, place names, and so on and so forth. We have the database uh, for that as well that we've created ourselves. And we also um, try to structure the dictionaries, and we have also digitalized the dictionaries and created the corpora for the 
retrieval purposes, and we were very happy with the result of the digitalization of these resources. We don't have any particular sort of plans for this corporate. Nevertheless, we are very much open to uh, cooperation proposals. We are ready to cooperate with others and provide this corporate. That's why I was very happy uh, that Jans mentioned in the beginning that the next phase for Hugo might entail uh, uh, cultural sort of corporate creation, if you will. There's a, an agreement with the European Digital Library or European and Europe, European Digital Information Center. I am a member of the European Network. I'm on the board, actually, of this network. And I represent uh, Latvia or the National Position Machine Translation. And corporate issues are always on our uh, meeting agenda. Every time we meet, we can that we need better quality data, more uh, precision is what we should strive for, and better quality translations are the main impediment of the European and its wider use. And I hope that uh, by 2020, when we complete the programming period, we'll be able to present a, a, a better quality uh, result. What's interesting about library resources is that we can not only provide, you know, complete text in this corpora. It's interesting that in the morning you talked about the PSI directive, the public information, public service information directive, and the usage of public information, which does not really apply to libraries directly per se, because libraries are. Uh, holding books that are owned by third parties and copyright to them is owned by the third parties and you know there has been a discussion on licensing of libraries but not all of the libraries will be able to license all the books you know we can't really license or buy <coughs> licenses for all 14,000 books that are being published on an annual basis that would be difficult to sort of get the license for the scientific use of this uh, books but you know databases library databases and dictionaries are available nevertheless they are you know peculiar in a sense but you know there are maps audio um, uh, materials that are not so interesting for the machine translation or language processing but um, that can be used, nevertheless, for different purposes. And Jan's already mentioned, museum has created a corpora of one million um, museum collection items or descriptions. And you know there are more and more things being digitalized. Archives, museum council is also digital, uh, digitizing or digitalizing its its. Uh, resources. Now, what concerns Latvian National Library and our resources and their digitalization, these resources are not really good for the parallel corpora. They are not really fitting the purpose of machine translation. And although colleagues said that, the, you know, there are a lot of translated resources translated into Latvian, but because of copyright and other reasons, we can't really create bilingual corpora. We can't pair up. Latvian English translations or have parallel texts in Latvian and English. We can do that. We have done that. But, you know, that again has been a one off project and it will never be a priority for the library. What concerns library catalogs, uh, uh, library databases uh, on top of museum databases, they contain a lot of artificial language. A lot of artificial descriptions that are not really usable for the indexing purposes. Librarians are very keen users of abbreviations, and there's a perfect reason for that because the library description model was devised in 1960s when every byte counted. So this lags on to this day, unfortunately, and changes are happening only now and gradually. And that makes it the processing of this data much more difficult, and it's not really, again, usable for the machine translation. Text recognition quality is a perpetual problem. We have to work with texts that have been recognized or, or that have been aligned manually. You know, modern texts are 100% uh, correct. 
but when it comes to archive documents that are, you know, contain some ancient language, they cannot really be translated. I mean, it's very difficult to pair up or align those documents because of language specificity or peculiarities. Now, I know that there is a great pressure coming through the copyright directive on um, data and data analysis. I mean, uh, texts and data mining should not be subject to copyright laws. Hopefully, they'll succeed. But nevertheless, let's see what the time holds for us in this regard. But you know, we can offer a lot uh, in. Uh, the form in the shape of the dictionaries and uh, professional dictionaries in uh, particular. That's what the uh, libraries have. And we are also uh, very good at creating those time sensitive uh, time uh, sensitive uh, comparative analyses. We know, for example, that the street names have changed over time, and we can help find you know, the name of the street if it has been changed several times over the course of, I don't know, how many years. And you know, if we'll have appropriate legal framework, we'll be able to also put out those digital resources all in online and we'll be able to prepare the corpora and publish them and the library is preparing the corpora we've not indexed uh, you know, our resources yet but other libraries have been successful and those mandatory copies are available in Estonia for example the publishers are requested to provide all the published material and the copies with uh, a note that it can be used for scientific purposes. They are uh, obliged to provide it free of charge. And of course, the librarians have a, a unique knowledge because librarians are very good at sort of um, quick reading the texts. And they, will, they are the best to sort of skim through those texts or do the skim reading and then you know, provide the, the best sources where to look more and you know, our competence in checking the uh, aligned texts it might also be useful from the machine translation point of view. Thank